I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Turns out in an, a post-apocalyptical world, kites come in pretty handy. That's right. We are talking DC's Harley Quinn, season two, episode three, Trapped. That's how I feel when I'm on this panel with my co-panelists all the way to my left's left. I don't even know what direction you are, but you better be at home. Chauncey K. Robinson Phillips the fourth. Yes, yeah, Chauncey K. Robinson. Hey, y'all. And of course, we have Tatiana Marie. Hello, guys. It's Tatiana Marisa. You didn't get you didn't get the like amazingly powerful introduction like Chauncey K. Robinson Phillips the fifteenth. Like you don't get one of those. You just get the. Tatiana okay, can Marie. I? But can I ask so why? Why can't I get the <laughs> whole thing? I mean, I'm just I'm just as much of a team player. Okay. Yes, because I agree. I, I feel like I'm very passive aggressive. I'm the cat woman of the crew. No, so you're joking. Speaking, I'm definitely. Yeah, you can't joker. you can't flip flop back and forth between <laughs> cat woman and joker. Okay, hold I'm on, just hold on. Saying. We decided last time that we could only pick characters that are actually in the episode. And so if I had to say who's the most cat woman, it would be me. And who's the most kite man, it would be Ryan Nielsen, who's who's helping us from behind the scenes. Hey, Ryan, what's up? I'm in the back cave here, just coming in hot, thank, trying to say- Thank you, Ryan. Thanks. Thank you so much, Ryan. We appreciate you. <laughs> Not a good time. Not a good time. Hey, everybody likes me. everybody likes a kite man, so yes, it's okay. Yes, people everybody love kite does. man. Yes. Of course, of You know course. who we don't well, like? The Jokers. Oh. Such a hater. I would expect nothing less from Poison Ivy. Uh, I've never no. Poison Ivy and Tati. Tati is a definitely uh, Gordon's daughter, Barbara. So that's how it works out. I can, I can take Barbara. that. I, can I, would, I would take that, yeah. I don't write the rules. But what, what we are going to do <laughs> is rewrite the rules. Don't, don't fight your nature, Chauncey. We're going to rewrite the rules and discuss and break down this week's episode, DC's Harlan Quinn, season two, episode three, Trap. We're going to talk about playing the field. That's the advice that Harley gives Ivy in regards to Kite Man. We're going to talk some Kite Man because that's our favorite character that's never there. Finally gets a lot of cameo. Dr. Trap, and you're talking like this. Riddler's mind, Mr. Freeze. I feel like that was an excellent Dr. Trap. That cat was, woman, of right. course. The <laughs> coolest cat on the planet. Dr. Psycho is a B-lister. Special segment, How Harley Are You? And we have some great news and gossip which Chauncey's going to bring up. So we have so much. You're going to want to stay tuned. What were your overall thoughts on this week's episode? Let's start with Chauncey K. Poison Ivy the fifth. Um, well, I, I actually really love this episode. I was, oh my gosh, I had an eargasm from listening to Tania Lathan play Catwoman. I just, I waited for this moment and I just knew she would kill it and she did. And I, I want a Catwoman spinoff show. Like I, I just want more Catwoman. There was not enough. I hope she comes back. And I just love the dynamic, the sirens kind of rep reference going on and I I really just enjoy this episode and the throwback to the very very obscure villain Dr. Trap so Tatiana Marisa I mean I really I really like this I, I liked it because it delved deeper into really connecting Harley Quinn and uh, Poison Ivy's relationship um, in the end and of course you know Kite Man came back and they're taking their relationship a step further so you know I'm always a fan of that we always ship it yeah <laughs> how can we not just only talk about catwoman i don't even know <laughs> right? what else happened in this episode <laughs> oh, oh my god stop. catwoman was the coolest person on the planet shows up late had ivy twirled around her little fingers yeah yeah like, totally i mean catwoman who wouldn't be is a talk about in a group of alphas catwoman out alpha everybody and that's what I love Catwoman so much. We're going to talk about her in so much more. Great episode. Playing the field. So here we get Harley giving Ivy a little bit of, uh, little bit of advice, some Steve Harvey advice. It's like, you know what? You just started loving other people other than plants. You should play the field. What were your thoughts on that suggestion? I don't think, I, I don't think Ivy needs to play the field. I definitely think that she needed to reconnect to the whole reason why she's poison ivy. That part is true, which she kind of did in the end. <laughs> she was pouring acid all over those um, the guys that were headed the board members. Yeah. yeah, the board members. But um, 
but I don't, I don't think she really needs to play the field. I mean, if she found somebody that loves her the way that Kite Man does, then why not explore that? That's something she hasn't done before. Chauncey. Yeah. I, I think Harley is the worst person to give life advice to anybody, especially when it comes to relationships. And I don't know, I just kind of felt, the minute she said it, I would just call, I just said hater to my screen. I was like, you're kind of hating right now. It's very clear. And it's fine because Harley has her flaws. She's not a perfect person. So it's understandable. I don't think it was jealousy necessarily, just the fact that she's like that girlfriend who's single now. So she wants her girlfriends to be single too. And that's usually toxic, so. <laughs> like, yeah. or it's like she doesn't want to share her you know like it's been them two against the world kind of a thing you know and then they, now they formed a group together and ivy's always been there you know yeah and she did seem a bit jealous when catwoman came into play as well <laughs> yeah. catwoman's effect on ivy i think everyone should be a bit jealous of catwoman <laughs> also envy her so yes I mean, exactly the I did. alpha <laughs> alpha came in the alpha <laughs> Alpha woman came into yeah, the and the that basically of the group. Just, no. We that didn't just say made that. It, so, it just made <laughs> it so everyone. Group, yeah. I mean, she stole the friggin' jacket. <laughs> the jacket. She took the diamond before he was about to propose. But she was like, went through everything. It's like it's like when was the last time you've stolen any jewelry? She's like, I'm always stealing jewelry. Right? I, was like, oh, I paused it. I was like, this is just so amazing. <laughs> because there's no there's no f's given. Like none at all. If I could put her in a, in a person today, I would categorize her as like Rihanna. Yeah, she was very right? Rihanna. I, yeah. I def definitely Rihanna vibe. Yeah, I, yeah, I It agree. makes me wonder what singer or celebrity Harley and Ivy would be in that case, but No, yeah. it was very good. I, I categorize, I agree, very Tehran. She was very Tehran. Uh, anyway. So Kite Man, <laughs> Kite Man comes in and is seen as giving them a ride to the point where Catwoman says, oh, wow, you must be doing well. You have a chauffeur. Kite Man is in love with Ivy. Kite Man is, clearly states, I could never do better than Ivy. What did you think about Kite Man being back in this episode? I loved him. I was waiting for him. I was, you know, one of the things, like, in episode two, I was wondering, you know, where he was. So it was great to, to see him again. I think, you know, I think him as even a solo character is very endearing. So, I mean, but I like him even better with Ivy. And I like the way, I think they're not obnoxious, the, the banter they have together too. I think it's cute. And I think it shows a softer side of Ivy um, that's nice to see. So I loved him being back. I feel like Kite Man is the only good that is in this show right now, besides Barbara Gordon. But other than that, it's Kite Man because he's never on any heist. He never does anything bad. Generally, like he literally, the only I think the only bad thing he's done is hit people with his kite. That's he did, it. He did just steal a ring for Ivy. Okay, but he stole it from, from you know, Another a villain. villain. <laughs> so that doesn't that doesn't count. You know, it doesn't count. Yeah, two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> you know who would say that? Catwoman. So uh... Doctor Trap, Doctor Trap is this villain who, as Chauncey pointed out, an obscure villain who's partial to traps. Yes. I, I loved his voice. <laughs> that voice it wasn't what I like, expected. What it wasn't what his, I expected That was his all. real voice. <laughs> you it's see really what funny. happens yeah. when you are with two. Like, it's just like, just, <laughs> just all over the place. Like, and he's so obscure that they could have just done that because I think like what I read about him was that he also was a major villain to another group that most people don't know about what, which was the justice experience. Yeah. Which <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone really knew about. I mean, you know, they had a few comics like the sixties and the seventies and that was about that. So I think it's really cool when this show likes to dig deep into DC universe as a whole, even with things that may not be mainstream popular. They yeah. have a lot of stuff to choose from. The Justice Experience or the 3LW to the Justice League's <laughs> Destiny's no! Child. Yes, no yes, more. Destiny's no. Child. So, hey, I grew up on them, okay? Thank you be you nice. Kind of like <laughs> you, get this, you get this Dr. <laughs> Trap character. You get all these traps in the Gotham Museum of, of, of villain's weapons. <laughs> it's just a museum full of weapons. And of course, the two goons in the beginning, the whole purpose is to break into Mr. Freeze's lair, which is impenetrable because of the ice he's using. And the two uh, Mr. Freeze goons are like, yeah, 
except if you have Firefly's gun that can melt through the ice. And then the other gun's like, oh, you're not supposed to say that. You're not supposed to tell them how you could find it in the Gotham Museum <laughs> under a lock and key. So we get that play. What were your thoughts on that? I was kind of disappointed that we didn't go straight into Mr. Freeze's lair. Cause that's what I was really looking forward to. I really want to see what's going on in there. And when she gets in there, that story play out. So I was almost too mm -hmm. eager. And that made me a little disappointed that they didn't play that out in this episode. Yeah, I, I thought it was, I think they're going to build up to Mr. Freeze because it's kind of a fine line with playing him, right? Like he's, it's weird because the other characters, the other villains, you can sort of uh, like really make fun of them in a big way. But Mr. Freeze has always had a very solemn sort of uh, plot line with his wife and things. So I think, I don't know, I feel like they might do that at a more pivotal point. So I was fine with it. I did think the henchman thing was a little slapsticky, but that was fine. Yeah. I thought the henchman thing was creative. I thought it was fun. It's a play on the age old Bond villain where they give up all the information <laughs> unprovoked. I thought it was I thought it was very funny and it's a great way to get from point A to point B very fast. So I, I really like that. Uh, I really like that use. Uh, with Mr. Freeze, I'm looking forward to the Mr. Freeze showdown. Clearly Harley has a lot of resentment for her for him freezing her and putting her in the middle of Penguin's Club to the point where she wanted to take Penguin's umbrella and of course she didn't get her hands on it. And Mr. Freeze is just this, is building up to, we don't have Joker, Penguin's dead. So this is like the main villain that's left. Cause it's not like we're thinking of Bane as a comparable villain. Mr. Freeze is like the main person. I can't think of anyone else other than Riddler who we do see. And we see that Riddler's mind is very strong. What were your thoughts on Riddler in this episode? I liked him. I mean, I thought, I, I'm i curious to see what his plan is, at, at, you know, staying there, because I'm sure it's, I'm positive, it's not just, hey, I get, you know, three square meals a day, and I'm in the best shape of my life, you know what I mean? I, I'm i wondering where he's going to go with that. Well, he did say he'll escape whenever he's ready. He said he'll escape right. when he's ready. Right, so when, what would that, I think he has, I think he has a, I think he believes in Harley and what she's doing. I think he knows that she's going to tackle Mr. Freeze and maybe he's going to wait until she gets all of the villains for him and then take control. Maybe, possibly, Chauncey? That would probably be, I mean, I agree. I think that would be the maybe his smartest move. And I did, I'd love the fact where he was like, I didn't even leave because like I get three meals a day here where I'm gonna go out to the wasteland and he didn't even have power out there, he has power now. Um, but I, I don't, I don't necessarily think Mr. Freeze or Riddler are like the big uh, villains of this season. I think these are just kind of the episodes to kind of maybe lay a base of something because I don't think either of them have wide, wide reaching world domination goals that would play into it as much. So watch Ooh. Bane come out on top. Everybody's doubting His him. His goons are the watch best. Watch him so come far. out on top. Yeah. His <laughs> goons are the best. They juice up. Like that's, <laughs> I mean, no other, all the other goons don't have that. That's, something it would be quite a twist if dr psycho was the one who came out on top especially considering he was considered the b-lister in this episode mm. and was very resentful about it <laughs> some harmless locker room talk <laughs> yeah <laughs> gee sure. they get that i've heard that before <laughs> strong it was a strong play dr psycho of course um dr psycho is this powerful creature and yet we see him playing second fiddle to harley seeing him playing second fiddle to riddler what do you guys think of Dr. Psycho? I, uh, you know, I think he's funny. And I honestly, I don't think he would try to separate from the rest of them. I mean, we saw last time with him and Shark, King Shark and stuff. It was just like, I think he does, he care. They're, they're a family at this point. I don't see, it would have to take something very extreme for him to break off and want to go full villain against Harley and them. So um, I, I think, I think one of the things he has, uh, I don't want to call it like short man syndrome or something like that, but he had, he wants to like, you know, prove himself to others at times but even you know they were saying it's like why does his idea matter to you that might play later on but I, I think they're such a family I don't see it going in a really extreme direction yeah I agree with you I don't I don't see him leaving them at all I think he's been through too much I also see him as a very dependent character you know yes. I don't think he's a person that can survive on his own mm -mm. and then we have of course Ivy gets back to her roots Catwoman has a huge effect on her 
and she hasn't done anything for the environment for a while. We see her attack the board members, but then we also see the final scene where she says she thinks she's ready and allows Kite Man to propose. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Very unnecessarily from both of you. Let's get into our special <laughs> segment, How Early Are You? The scene in the episode which reminds you of you, Chauncey. Um, probably what Ivy was going through because that, you know, that, that feeling, um, at a time where you might feel like your life has gone to a certain point where you're like, am I doing this for others or am I doing this for me? Especially when you have the potential to maybe do more. So you feel like you're maybe, are you holding yourself back and whatnot? So, yeah. 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 That was mine. <laughs> that was mine too. I, I, you know, sometimes there's a point in your life where you get you all of a sudden, it seems like life has sped up and you look mm -hmm. back and you go, wait a minute, what did I want exactly? Mm -hmm. Am I there yet? So I definitely identified with that. How many more kids could you have, right? <laughs> so I'm gonna, more, identify, more. I'm gonna identify with Catwoman mm -hmm. when Ivy says, when Ivy's like, well, do you always steal jewelry? It's like, I'm always stealing jewelry because that's how I feel like when people call, I'm like, I'm always working. I'm always doing what I'm here to do. So. I, I appreciated say, that. I will say there should have been a Batman reference with Catwoman because yeah. her boo has been missing for over a year. And we all know that's an epic couple. I think she's hiding some of her emotional thing and hopefully they'll unpack that later. Hopefully that would be awesome. Because she's in love with Batman. Yeah. I really like the fact that we had a black Catwoman, which is yes. not, of course, to <laughs> uh, cat, coming Catwoman where we are going to get a Zoe Kravitz. Yes, we are eating so well. News and gossip that we have, Chauncey. Well, according to Entertainment Weekly, uh, basically they had a uh an interview with one of the show showrunners, Patrick Schumacher, where he said that they will be exploring, and this might be detriment to those of us who are shipping Kite Man and Ivy, but they are going to explore Ivy and Harley Quinn romance. So uh, basically, he was saying that they're going to be uh, planting some uh, some little tidbits here and there, and that Harley's going through a breakup right now, so it's going to take a minute, and that Ivy might want more stability at this point, so it, she might be very resistant to emerging feelings with uh, Harley, but they are definitely having it in the uh, horizon of having a, a Ivy and Harley friendship turn into romance, which is reminiscent of the DC comics where in some iterations, they are an actual relationship. I Ooh. don't want this, but yeah. I mean, it sounds <laughs> exciting. Can't wait to see that and so much more. Of course, uh, it, we did see some tidbits of Ivy and Catwoman and there were nods to last week's episode with Clayface where a lot of people are insinuating that Clayface is gay because of uh, Clayface's infatuation with Chad. And then uh, of course, our opinion that being gender neutral and just sexually fluid is Clayface's modus yeah. operandi. We'll find yeah. out so much more when we talk about it next week. Until then, where can people find you, Chauncey? K. Robinson. You can find me at Rotten Tomatoes where all of my uh, reviews and such are up there at the Film and TV Critic. Tatiana. And you can find me, Tatiana Marisa, at Tatiana Marisa on all social media platforms. And of course, you can find me at I am Tehran all across the board, hosting and paneling on a slew of other After Buzz After Shows because all of your TV shows, uh, favorite TV shows are my favorite TV shows too. Until next week, we will be talking more DC's Harley Quinn. Ryan Nelson, where can people find you? Doesn't matter. We'll see you guys <laughs> next week. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.